What's up guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a speed test against the Mac Studio 2022 versus the 2021 MacBook Pro. Both of these computers are spec'd exactly the same. It has the M1 Max 32 core GPU. This one has 64 gigabytes of RAM, the Mac Studio. When I point this way, I'm talking about the Mac Studio. And this has 32 gigabytes of RAM. That is the only difference. Every time that I do something, like I do a render or an export or export in proxies, I will make sure the swap memory is at zero. I will make sure that is not a factor in this speed test because I do know that that can slow down a render or export. I bought this computer because I travel a lot. A lot of you guys know that. There'd be times I'm sitting here editing for two weeks and then I get a call, I gotta go shoot somewhere, Las Vegas, California, Kansas, and I gotta take a laptop. Before I took the 2019 MacBook Pro, which did okay, but not near as good as this one has been doing for me. I kind of wanted something similar so when I'm on the road, I don't have, I don't take a massive hit. So with that, let's get into this video. I want to see if I'm not taking the massive hit or am I just excited for a new computer. Let's get into this video. Okay, so we're getting into this video. I want you guys to be aware that this test is completely fair. All of the footage and everything is on the same hard drive. Obviously, I didn't test these at the same time. They're at separate times. So the same hard drive that was used for the Mac Studio is the same hard drive that was used with the MacBook Pro. So I did use two SSDs, one for the proxies and the renders and the export, and one just to have the footage and the project sitting on it. So it did have two SSDs to do separate things. One to read the footage, one to put the footage on. Okay, so the footage that was used in this project is Canon C70 4K, 60 frames a second, long gab, long gob, however you say it. I don't know how to say it, long gob, I think. That's the format that was used throughout this whole entire project. So it is a tough format for computers to export, render, you know, and break down. So we will see that in these tests, I'm sure. It taken a little longer the timeline that i am exporting and rendering is 4k 30 frames a second that is the timeline 4k 30 so when i render it will be rendering 4k 30 pro res 422 and whenever i make proxies it will be the low res pro res into a separate hard drive okay so now that all that is out the way let's go ahead and start exporting with the mac studio let's go ahead and break down the proxies let's get the proxies in there and see how long it takes to do that with all of this canon c70 footage which it ain't really that much footage because it was a small project, but it don't matter. We're gonna do it all right now. Let's see how long that takes. Okay, so now that that is finished, that took 24 minutes and 10 seconds to break all that 4K 60 frames a second footage down to 540p 60 frames. So that's the time on the Mac Studio. Let's go ahead and render the timeline that's already edited and cut up, good to go. Let's go ahead and render that timeline, see how long that takes. Okay, so this video is a seven minute, 48 second video. It took six minutes, 12 seconds to render this timeline, which you know when it renders, it makes all those clips 4K, 30 frames a second in a different SSD if you have it set that way, which I do. It broke all that down in six minutes, 12 seconds. Okay, so now the final test for the Mac Studio is exporting out the project into a H.264 project that we could watch, put on YouTube, do whatever we wanna do. As you see, all the settings are gonna be exactly the same with the Mac Studio. Here's all the settings, you can remember them. Also, I did put an effect on there, so the color grading will not change after the export. If you know anything about Premiere, you have to put this LUD on there for it to be exactly the way you color graded it. So anyways, that is on there. And with the export, let's see how long that takes. So exporting a seven minute and 48 second video, the export took 14 minutes, 57 seconds, which for a 4K 30 frames per second timeline, breaking down 4K 60 frames a second footage, long, go long gob footage, I hate that, I hate how that's pronounced, but breaking down that footage, which is very tough footage for any computer to break down because it's really not the best footage to be working with, to be honest. But anyways, that's not a bad time. So now let's jump over into the Mac Studio and see the difference. Let's break down the times and see how long it takes for the MacBook Pro. I mean, I don't know if I said Mac Studio, but let's see how long it takes for the MacBook Pro right here to break down that same project, same footage, same settings. Let's see how long it takes. Okay, so breaking down the proxies on the MacBook Pro, 
It took exactly 25 minutes, 18 seconds, which is only one minute longer than the Mac Studio. So that's pretty good. I'm actually excited about that time, um, 25 minutes. And then on the Mac Studio, it only took 24 minutes. That is a pretty good time. I am excited about that. Let's go ahead and get into the render and see how long it takes to render this timeline. And again, the settings are exactly the same. Let's see how long it takes to render this project. Okay, so this is where everything takes a turn. I'm not sure why this computer took so long to render this timeline. It took exactly 25 minutes and 47 seconds, which is way longer than the Mac Studio. So this is where it all took a turn. I'm kind of confused of why it took that long, but I do have some theories. I will go over at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and get to the export to see how long it took to export this timeline, this video. Okay, so the export was extremely long as well. It took 34 minutes and 22 seconds whenever the Mac Studio took 14 minutes and 47 seconds. So everything but rendering out the proxies took way longer than I expected. So I really do want to you know, test out the MacBook Pro 2019 against this 2022 MacBook Pro because I wanna see the difference. I wanna see if there is a difference. I mean, obviously there's a difference. I gotta remember that that was 4K footage, you know, long gob footage from a C70, 4K60, so there is a lot going on, but the Mac Studio chewed right through it, no problem, and the MacBook Pro took a really long time. The next video that I am gonna post is gonna be the MacBook Pro 2022 versus the 2019 that has the i7, so I wanna see the difference there to see if this was a good investment, because I mean, this is what I use to travel, so my theory of why this export it took so long is I think even though I didn't give the Mac Studio time to breathe, I just did each one back to back. I didn't let it breathe. But this one I did let breathe and I let made sure the CPU cooled down to like 114. Also, which I'm sure you've seen in the test, the Mac Studio only got to 156, sometimes 152 Fahrenheit degrees. This MacBook Pro got to 206, 202. So this was getting way hotter than the Mac Studio. Obviously, the Mac Studio don't have a screen on it. It's bigger. It has more. It has a bigger fan. This has two fans. That has a bigger fan, and it has two fan, two really big fans. So that one is made, you know, for video editing. But this one is too. So I think that the MacBook Pro didn't have time. I think once the CPU got hot. I think that was it. I, I probably would have had to wait 30 to 40 minutes for it to cool the whole system down to get good numbers. Because as you've seen, when I exported the proxies, it was perfectly fine. But I think that's the difference in the Mac Studio and a laptop is the Mac Studio, even though it's spec exactly the same, there's that breathing room and those two big freaking fans in there, which I left both computers on system controls. I did not mess with the fans. Both of them were on system control, so keep that in mind. I think that's what the Mac Studio, even if you get the same spec laptop, the Mac Studio is gonna outperform the laptop because it has thermal room, I guess I could say. So it's like this one, I, I honestly think thermal throttled after the proxy set. I I think it was toast from there. So with that, that's this video. I do appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, and I'll see you in the next video.